What's good, everybody? We're back with another weekly update of the Nomadic Deluxe album rollout. I am your host, Nomad222. For those of you who are here for the first time, let me give you a background on who I am. I am a hip-hop and spoken word artist. I'm also a father of four. I make music. I produce events. I do a whole bunch of stuff. But this whole series that you're seeing right here, this is like the eighth episode since we started this thing so eight weeks ago i started rolling out my album using a waterfall release format and the background to what that means is that every single week i'm dropping one track every friday from my album an album that is 17 tracks long and so at the end of the 17 weeks you have my whole album on all streaming platforms or you can purchase it entirely from even.biz that's even.biz you can purchase my album and you can pay what you want for it but that's a whole other thing we're not going to get into that we're going to get into the waterfall release and i'm going to talk to you guys uh and give you guys a bit of an update on what's been happening in life in this past week i'll be completely honest i'm not really into the headspace that i need to be in to talk to you guys about this but i'm going to push through anyway and you know give it out to everybody that's been you know waiting for for this update um and shout out to everybody who's been watching from the start if you haven't make sure you go back to that first episode but let's go ahead and get into it without any further ado so starting off with our spotify monthly listeners as you guys know from the first week we started off with 51 spotify listeners and our goal our target for that metric was that we wanted to reach 4 million monthly listeners and it's been a crazy number since we started it's still a crazy number in week eight but we have made progress and i'm happy to say that in week eight we are sitting at 442 monthly listeners on spotify whereas last week we were at 416 it's not a massive jump compared to the other jumps that we've made over the past couple of weeks i feel like we are reaching a plateau since we've uh, you know, in week six, we went from 344 to 460. Now in week seven, we went from four. Oh, wait, no, that was week seven. Sorry. Now in week eight, we've gone from 416 to 442. A much smaller jump. I wouldn't be surprised if it starts to dwindle around there. Maybe we start seeing it go down a little bit. But positive thoughts. Staying positive is still a win. A dub is a dub. So to total streams in eight weeks we've hit 8320 last week we were at 8151 um still on the incline and remember we started at 5632 so what's that that's like 3000 since we since we started just under so shout out to everyone who's running up the music on spotify really appreciate you and with that being said we have gained one new spotify follower over the past week we are at 186 followers and from week one we started at 173 our goal for followers on spotify is 10,000, so that's great welcome to the one person that's joined spotify playlist ads we are now at 368 so we have had an increase of 18 ads to playlists in the past week that's that's sick that is awesome thank you everyone who's adding it to their playlist i think that might be the biggest jump so far we started off with 280 in that department by the way so 368 that's pretty crazy now apple music daily listeners we are still at three last week we reached three for the first time after sitting at two for the longest time so that's cool apple music total streams we are now at 7800 whereas last week we were at 7700 and we started at 7500 so we know that apple music's not as popular as spotify is which is you know global uh i mean uh you know that that's usually the case for for everyone spotify's got way more of the market share than apple music so that's all good uh instagram followers we gained six followers and we're now at 4046 um last week 4040 and the week before that 4031 which is the lowest no actually the lowest no that is the lowest that we dropped to sorry so the lowest we dropped to since starting this was 4031 after starting in week one with 4111 as we know there was like bots and stuff that we had to deal with and all of that um but anyway we're back up with 4046 and we would rather filter out the people that don't want to be on the journey as well as all the bots as well as all the spam we want those guys gone so that we can make room for our actual community and the people that are like-minded and want to be here with us on this journey so 4046 shout out to all of you 
Instagram engagement, like I said, since the whole ratio changed and we now need to find the ratio ourselves, we started at 3% uh, two weeks ago. Then we went to 3.06 and last week we were at 3.09, which was cool. And I think that has a lot to do with me announcing that I was going on tour, which is cool. Uh, that post seemed to, to drive a lot of traffic. There was a lot of engagement on that. Um, shout out to Exploiting Your Kids, man. If you guys haven't seen the video that I'm talking about, go find Nomad222. I'm going on tour. Um, you'll see the video that I'm talking about by my kids. Thank you to my kids for being so down and and wanting to be so entertaining, especially my daughter, my eldest, Anaya. Um, but yeah, they'll they'll do it for you. That's one way to get it to tap into multiple audiences is to make a make a short little music video with your kids um, and have them dance with you and make it entertaining and things like that. So um, that's what happened over the past week. In terms of TikTok followers, uh, we gained 10 new followers on TikTok. So that was cool. So we were at 5,273, now we're at 5,283. And of course our goal is 10K. And remember that we started off with 5,224. So it's been slowly, slowly, you know, adding more and more followers. And one thing I'm noticing over the past week is a lot more comments, a lot more comments on the reels, which seems to be hard to get these days. People really are not commenting on, on your posts or anything like that um or maybe that's just me but they're commenting on my posts lately so that's cool um actually more than just the fire emoji which is really cool like if you guys if you guys are interacting with me i want you to interact like i want you to ask me questions about what i do i want you to ask me questions about you know what it took to make this song what was i going through what was my mental state and things like that i love to answer that sort of shit um otherwise if you just send me a fire emoji i'm probably not going to respond um just to be real in terms of the tiktok post engagement rate we went down this week 2460 which is is quite sad but i think that's got a lot to do with the fact that the views and likes were a lot more um uh, actually, the, the views were a lot more than usual which you know is is really strange so you guys are just watching huh you guys are just you guys are just watching me doing my thing and you don't want to you don't want to leave a like or a comment or anything like that all right that's cool i see i see anyway uh youtube subscribers we gained three new subscribers from 473 to 476 we're inching that much closer to 500 and eventually 1000 but like I said, I want a play button, guys. Help me get that play button so I can hang it up on the wall somewhere so I can take these coats down and put a play button there instead. But anyway, 476. Thank you to everybody that's watching this right now. You're probably one of these subscribers and everyone that hasn't subscribed, shame on you. Subscribe to the channel, man, come on, anyway. That's the analytics for this week. I gotta be honest, the past week, I have been really locked into the tour that I just announced. And there's a big reason behind that. You guys are gonna be hearing a lot more about that because I'm about to go into overdrive with, you know, pushing this tour and things like that. And it, luckily I've got this platform right here because I can be a little bit more transparent about it. So I signed on to the Bridging the Music tour um where they're doing mini fests around the globe now for those of you who don't know a little bit of context bridging the music is a us-based global initiative um where they are putting on these mini fests around the globe i already said that didn't i anyway they're putting on these shows internationally so they're based in the us but they'll do tours in every single city in the us new york um Alabama, whatever. I just made that up off the top of my head, but they've got a website. You can check it out. I've got a bunch of different stuff. The cool thing about Bridging the Music is that they route the tours already. They get in touch with all the venues. They find out where's the venues that make sense for acts that are sort of around, you know, my uh, level right now, um, which, you know, I guess I'm still considered emerging, you know, since I haven't really broken out past uh, Melbourne. Um, so they've already routed it, they've got it all set up, they're, you know, doing all the admin, they've generated the ticket sites, the graphic design of the posters and things like that, it's all there, they draw up the contracts, they make sure that everyone gets paid and everything like that, right? Um, so that's cool, uh, and the thing is that 
I signed on. Uh, and the other thing that's cool about it is that they have these shows already set in place and artists can sign up and purchase um, or they can sign up and buy into whatever shows that they want to do. So if there's a show happening in California or if there's a show happening in New Zealand or in Sydney or wherever, right, um, you can pick which stops you want to add to your tour. And you join a lineup of, you know, art, other artists that have picked those stops as well until the whole lineup is full, and then that's where you're that's where you're gonna go and do your tour, right? Um, so me, I picked four shows that were around my vicinity um, on on the on the calendar. So they had the Jan January 24th, they had Christchurch. 25th, they had Auckland. And then on the 29th of January, they had Perth and 1st of Feb, they had Sydney. So I pretty much just did like a whole circle around Melbourne and said, those are where I want to stop. And they're all really close together. So it's just like one clean sweep of those, those four stops. And that's why I chose them, right? The problem is that I signed up to those quite impulsively and I've locked myself into a contract where I have to meet these obligations. And if I pull out of that contract and those obligations, then I'm liable to pay a certain fee, right? So I kind of have no choice but to make that work. And the, the ultimate problem on top of that is that uh, we have to take care of flights and accommodation. So I have to figure out how to fly over to Christchurch, how to get to Auckland, how to fly to Perth and fly to Sydney and then back. Otherwise, I can't get to those, those stops and meet my obligation. And then I'm ultimately forced to, you know, pay that cancellation fee. So the cancellation fee is like 50 bucks. And then uh, on top of that 50 bucks, we have to pay 50% of our tip ticket obligations, which I think is like 17, uh, 1,750 US. Um, so half of that I have to pay in addition to 50 bucks. And on top of that is also US dollars. So I'm in a bit of a pickle, right? Um, but I signed on to it. It was something that, you know, again, if you are an emerging artist, this is something that I always preach and I just got caught myself doing it. So extra, extra careful reminder to be careful and read the fine print, read what you're getting into. Um, these guys, you know, they've done nothing wrong. They've got a great initiative going at the same time, you know, don't sign anything until you know exactly what you're getting into, exactly what you're liable for, because now I have to make this work. Now, instead of hopping on that for too long, let me tell you guys about what exactly I'm doing to make it work. So there is luckily a grant that's open at the moment. Unfortunately, it closes on October 1st, which is next week. So I've been busting my ass the past couple of days to figure out how I can go for this grant. It's called the Music Australia Export Development, I think, Fund for International Performance and Touring, um, which pretty much means that it's funding to help assist a tour that is already in the works for anywhere outside of Australia. And any any Aussie based artists are eligible for it. So that's great for me. It's also open to any Australians that are living abroad, which makes it more competitive, unfortunately. But I think I have a solid chance because Bridging the Music is already a tour that's in place. I've already signed a contract, so I've got proof of it. I also got a letter of support from Bridging the Music, which is great. Um, so I'm definitely, definitely going to go for it. Uh, but what else? So the other thing is that, yes, so the main thing about this grant is that it's matched funding, which means that if I want to go for the minimum, which is 5,000, I think, I also need to raise 5,000 and match that amount. So I need to raise 5,000 first so that they can match the funding and give me another 5,000. And then I'll have 10,000, which honestly is a little bit much considering the tour. It'll definitely help like, cause then I can use the fund, the 5,000 that we've uh, raised for uh, just the Australia stuff. And then the 5,000 from that tour can be just for the New Zealand stuff, which means that we can 
actually get some accommodation instead of doing some couch surfing, which I'm not opposed to. You know, I'm, I'm cool with that. If we want to couch surf, we want to go over to Koro's house or, you know, my, my auntie's got some places. Maybe we can stay with them. Um, but we'll figure that stuff out when we get there. In other words, um, look, I just got to get there. We just got to get there. And I want to take Levi with me because he's a producer that has, that you know, had my back the past couple of months and we've been making some really dope shit. He's playing a very integral role in the music that I have coming out next year. So, you know, it's very important to me that we go over and do this together. I think it'd be a great bonding experience for the both of us to, to see another country, see a new market, see a new audience, play in front of them and show them what we can do. Um, and it'll just tie in beautifully to all the music that we have coming out next year. Anyway, before I, I'll, I'll touch base on that a little bit more, but I want to talk more about what's, what's happening. Um, so that's, that's the grant that we're going for. Now you guys are probably wondering how we're going to raise that 5,000. So the $5,000, uh, I'm going to be raising using the Australian cultural fund campaign that I've set up. So the Australian cultural fund is a website. It's similar to like GoFundMe and stuff, but the beauty is that they don't take a processing fee or anything like that as of like sometime last year or something, they've made it completely 100% of proceeds go to the artist directly, which is awesome. So if we raise that 5,000, they don't take a split. They give us the full 5,000. Awesome. Um, so I've set up a campaign on the ACF. I'm still kind of waiting for approval right now, um, but it's set up. It's got more information about this whole thing and how it's going to tie into what we're doing, how it's actually, I've, I've put it all out there. I've spelled it all out. So if you guys don't read that, you will be able to see exactly how we're going to spend the money. Um, exactly why it makes sense for us to raise these funds and exactly how it helps not just me but future artists from Wyndham from from this area who, who look like me to to do stuff similar in the future you know it, we're, we're trying to break new ground here it's not necessarily new ground it's, it's new ground for me for sure this is the first time in my career I had the chance to perform outside of Melbourne just crazy because I've been at it for nearly 10 years um, but yeah so so we're going to be raising funds through there um i am hoping that you know people like yourselves who are watching this can find it in your heart to you know support this and support what we're doing because it is a big opportunity for us but at the same time i'm hoping that i can leverage some of the connections that i've made with some of the organizations that i've worked for and worked with over the past you know nine years to uh, create in this space and create in this industry and I'm hoping that I can count on them to you know pledge some some big numbers you know or just donate whatever they can and support me a little bit further to, to make sure that we don't have to pull out of this tour because that would be so humiliating uh, especially after I after I posted that video with my with my kids um, prematurely I think it would be so su such a big misstep in my career to have to swallow that bullet and at the same time man like what's half of 1750 is like 875 or something us dollars to au dollars that conversion does, is not friendly to us so if i have to pay that out of pocket if i have to come out of pocket for that amount to pay off pay off this contract contract that's that's a tough pill to swallow i gotta be real sir I'm just kind of venting at this point. Um, look, positive thoughts, positive thoughts. Let's let's stay positive. Um, if I can't do it, I can't do it. But I'm damn sure gonna try, and I have been trying. So, like I said, I've, I've written up an application for this grant. I'm waiting for some supporting documents before I send it off. Um, but that's in the works. The Australian Cultural Fund thing is pending approval right now, but once that's out, I'm going to start pushing that. I just put together this video today to announce the fundraiser and explain the whole situation a little bit better than I'm explaining it right now. Um, it's actually out already, but I'm not promoting it until the actual fund is approved because um, that just makes the most sense. But um, what else have I been doing, man? I've been 
been drafting emails i've been you know stoking the flames with those organizations that i was talking about to hopefully do stuff i've been talking to my boy jbn about potentially setting up a melbourne show as maybe a farewell show a f- farewell a farewell show potentially doing a farewell show in melbourne um Pretend, or if not a farewell show, a homecoming show after the tour is done. So once we get back from Melbourne, we do something. But you know, just just something so that we can we can end the year right. And look, that's another thing too. If I do have to bite the bullet, I will. I'll accept it gracefully. It is what it is. But then I definitely want to do something here in Melbourne anyway. You know, if we're if we're not going to go on tour next year, I want to end the year with something here. Um, and I think I, I think I alluded to that last, last week too, but anyway, um, this is, this is the, this is the stressful side of things. This is really the shitty side of things. And I, I, I consistently put myself in these positions where I, I end up putting a clock on myself, on my craft, on my art. It's 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 such a stupid thing to do. If you guys are emerging artists yourself or thinking about getting into this business, don't do it like me. <laughs> Be smarter than me. Use me as a cautionary tale because this is just is so dumb. I can't believe that I've I've gone ahead and done this to myself, especially after the effort that I made to focus on you know doing this within my means. You know, I, I thought that I'd I'd scaled back enough to you know make sense with my lifestyle to make sense with how many kids i'm trying to raise and you know being there for my partner as well it's been really really stressful not just for me but for for all of us and you know thank god for my partner once again i know i said this last week but man if she was not able to hold it down the way that she has been and that's another thing that i gotta address i gotta be super super serious about this guys the window is closing for me. I think I might have said this last week too, but man, there is there is really the sense of the window. And let me go into that a little bit deeper. Like I, the, one of the reasons why it's so noticeable right now is because of all the people whose presence I no longer feel around me, if that makes sense. I used to have so many people in my corner supporting me you know really with me and essentially i had a team when i and i didn't even realize it i had people that were you know giving me advice who were constantly checking up on me to see if i was doing the right thing to see if uh, just just to check in and see what i'm up to what what's coming next what am i doing next what's the next move so many of those voices completely absent all these moves that i'm making recently nowhere to be seen nowhere to be heard and it's not it's not their fault but it just makes it more blatantly obvious that they understand what i understand too that i'm 26 now and i've been chasing this dream since i was 18 years old that's that's a long ass time to be learning a lot of these lessons that i'm unfortunately learning to this day so i understand i understand it, it, it hurts it hurts like a motherfucker to know that like these people see the writing on the wall um i'm fortunate that you know my partner's hanging in there um but how how long how long is she gonna be able to do that you know what i mean and that's not to discredit her like if anything is is to her credit we are four kids four kids under the age of six or seven handful um love them to death love them to death but they 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 require a lot of attention the older that they get um but yeah um i know i'm i know i'm just rambling at this point yeah but as positive as as i try and be especially you know when it comes to social media where i can just hide all the negatives um i i can't deny the fact that the window is closing for me and i need to make a drastic leap in progress over the next not even 12 months less than that maybe six 
I need to make a drastic leap in progress in order to prove that I still have a stake in this game. Otherwise, it's really looking like it's time to hang it up. I just don't have it in me to, to keep going. I love making music. I love putting music out. I love performing. But this, this world is about money, man. Cash rules everything around me. And for me to be 26, nearly 27 and still not have it, if I keep going down this path next year when I, you know, I'm, I'm next month I turn 27. And then that's, that's 12 months where I, I, you know, could potentially end up in that club. Um, I fucking hate money, man. I hate money so much. I hate what it does to people. I hate how it taints the art. I just want to create every single day. I just want to make music and have that keep a roof, a roof over my family's head. And I, it sucks so bad because I, I know that I could be one of the greats, that I could go down as one of the greats. I've heard it too many times confirmed from other people that I'm one of the best in this city to ever do it. And even though, even though I'm nowhere close to where I should be, I'm nowhere close to doing this full time as an artist, it just hurts to know how far I've been able to take this thing. And it's <laughs> fuck man I've been able to do so much cool shit as an artist that so many people will never be able to say that they've done in their lifetime and it, uh, my ego is starting to show a little bit and this and my ego plays a big role in why i haven't quit yet but when you when you've done what i've been able to do in nine years how can you then turn around and just just stop doing that anyway i'm i'm done talking um be like that came out last night or earlier today um so make sure you guys listen to that it's by myself featuring as one Produced by Mongry Made, sound on all platforms. That's my attempt to, to end this on a light note. I'm sorry that it got that deep. It's tough right now. I'm gonna sit in it for the rest of the night. Hopefully, wake up tomorrow morning with a clearer mind and uh, and a bit more of a will to to you know keep pushing and keep trekking. But hopefully, this this gives you a real insight to you know how how this shit's going. Um, but look to everybody who's still supporting to everybody who watches this all the way through i love you so so much and i'm so so grateful for all of your support over the years um hopefully this window is something that we can pry open and it doesn't close on us um, and that's as hopeful as i can be at the end of this episode thank you again for watching much love you know what it is yeah yeah